His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Supreme Commander of the Armed Forces, received at Safriya Palace the families of the martyrs, First Lieutenant Hamad Khalifa Al Kubaisi and First Warrant Officer Adam Salim Nasib, who passed away while performing their noble duty as part of the Arab Coalition Forces participating in Operation Decisive Storm and Restoring Hope, stationed on the southern border of Saudi Arabia as a result of the treacherous attack. His Majesty the King expressed condolences for the two martyrs, praying to Allah the Almighty to rest their souls in eternal peace and to grant their families patience and solace, wishing the injured a speedy recovery. His Majesty affirmed that each martyr is a source of pride for His Majesty and for their families and fellow brothers in arms who sacrificed their lives for their country and marked a history of heroism and became a source of pride for their families and country, adding that defending the land of the two holy mosques is a great honor. His Majesty affirmed that the sacrifices of the country's martyrs will remain engraved in their national memory and that their families are no less a heroes than their children in their patience and patriotism. His Majesty prayed to Allah the Almighty to rest the souls of the martyrs in eternal peace and to protect Bahrain and bless it with further security and prosperity. The families of the martyrs expressed thanks, appreciation and gratitude to His Majesty the King for his condolences, wishing him abundant health and happiness and expressing pride in their martyrs.
The Interior Minister General Sheikh Rashid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa attended a ceremony by the General Directorate of Verdict Enforcement and Alternative Sentencing, Marty King, the graduation of the first batch of the Open Presence Program beneficiaries. The program represents the fundamental humanitarian values and principles of the reform project of His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa. The ceremony also honored winners of projects, success partners, and supporters of government bodies, companies, and national organizations. Organizations. The minister asserted that the Open Presence Program represents a success story that reflects the development of enforcing the alternative san sanctions and measures law within the enhancement approach of humanitarian programs and initiatives of the values and principles of the reform project of His Majesty the King. He hailed the ongoing support provided by the government led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister to carry out reform projects. He thanked government bodies, national organizations and companies for supporting rehabilitation and training programs for the Open Presence Program beneficiaries. He hailed the dedication, sincerity and professionalism of General Directorate of Verdict Enforcement and Alternative Sentencing and the program's organizers through developing rehabilitation programs and reinforcing cooperation with community organizations. He also thanked the beneficiaries for their commitment, discipline and seriousness during the program, contributing to their active integration into society. Meanwhile, the Director General of Verdict Enforcement and Alternative Sentencing, Sheikh Khalid bin Rashid Al Khalifa, asserted that the graduation ceremony of the first batch of the Open Presence Program beneficiaries reflects the humanitarian values and principles of the reform era of His Majesty the King. He stated that since the endorsement of the Alternative Sanctions and Measures Law per the directives of His Majesty the King and the follow up of His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, this civilized and humanitarian project has become a bright side of the human rights in Bahrain. He said that uh, during the last five years, the instructions of the Interior Minister were a guideline in all operations and implementation procedures. The Open Presence Program becomes uh, one of the alternative sanctions phases and a remarkable step in the reform system. It is a source of pride to Bahrain and the human rights system. He said the program is the first of its kind in the Middle East and an innovative experience that works to rehabilitate and train middle and high-risk beneficiaries through the highest international standards to integrate them into society. The Director General highlighted a side of the success story stated on the 1st and 21st of August 2022, the first phase of the first batch reached 48 candidates, as 96% of them succeeded in reaching the second phase that started on the 2nd of April 2023. During the implementation of the Phase 13, beneficiaries got permanent jobs in partnership with the private sector. The success of the first batch paved the way for the second batch of 57 candidates. He affirmed that the success achieved reflects the support provided to the Open Presence Program by the Interior Minister. Meanwhile, the beneficiaries expressed thanks and appreciation to the Interior Minister, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, expressing gratitude for the support of the Interior Minister and the Director General of the Verdict Enforcement and Alternative Sentencing. The Interior Minister honored the supporters, partners, distinguished beneficiaries and those who provided winning projects. He toured an exhibition that showcases the beneficiaries' projects that were designed at the workshops of the Open Presence Complex. It was, it was very inspiring. I actually had the, the chance and privilege to visit the open prison a few months ago and I got to see it and meet some of the, uh, the people that we saw today. 
and hear their stories. And then to see them today uh, finishing their program was um, really impressive and really inspiring. The other thing that was really impressive was uh, we got to see the, uh, the ideas, uh, the competition, um, and really incredible um, ideas and, 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 and kind of innovation. And I think one of the neat things about this is that it recaptures the innovation of Bahrainis and allows them to re-enter society and contribute to the country again. Um, it's also a really ex a good example of reform and forward thinking that characterizes Bahrain. Um, it's also, uh, uh, like I said, it's a chance for a second chance uh, for individuals and for the country. Uh, and we're proud to have played a very small part in just in supporting with technical assistance. The UK Embassy played such a huge role. Um, there are American organizations, UK organizations. Um, but to see this type of international cooperation come together with a Bahraini idea and help Bahrain make its own vision come to reality, it was, uh, it was nice to be part of it. And uh, Bahraini should be proud, uh, the ministry should be proud, and we, we look forward to seeing uh, where it goes from here. So today I came kindly invited by His Excellency, the Minister of Interior, to see uh, the graduation of the Open Prisons Programme and I'm hugely impressed by what I've seen. This is an amazing initiative, uh, leading initiative in the region and it's really successfully transforming lives and I think it owes much to the vision and leadership of His Majesty and of His Excellency, the Minister of Interior. And uh, for the UK, uh, we think that this is just a fabulous thing to be doing for the Bahraini people. Um, uh, but also, it really is flying a beacon uh, in the region uh, and, and modelling a new approach that people, I think, should be looking to. Bahrain national handball team qualified for the Asian Games currently being held in the Chinese city of Hangzhou. After defeating its competitor, the Chinese, the Japanese national team in the semi-finals. The Bahraini team won with a score of 30 to 28, being only one step away from winning a gold or silver medal. When the team faces its Qatari counterpart on Thursday, which also qualified for the final by defeating the Kuwaiti team by 29 to 24 goals. This is the second consecutive qualification for the national team to the finals after reaching the Jakarta Asian Cup finals in 2018 and winning the silver medal. In the athletics competition, runner Oli Kimi Odi Ekoya succeeded in winning a gold medal in the women's 400-meter hurdles. Oli Kimi was able to finish the race in 54.45 seconds, thus setting a new record in the race at the Asian Games level. With this result, the kingdom maintained its lead in the Arab countries, advancing to ninth place in the overall standing with 12 colored medals, including seven golds, one silver and four bronze. Bahrain continues to stay ahead in the 19th Asian Games in China after the athletics team won new medals in the competitions. More in this report. The Kingdom of Bahrain continues its distinguished participation in the 19th ASEAN Games held in China, where the Kingdom's champions continue to ascend the podiums with all merit, raising the flag of the Kingdom high in this Asian sports forum which is witnessing great participation and strong competition in various games. The champions succeeded in increasing the kingdom's tally of colored medals in this continental championship by achieving three new medals, two gold and one bronze. Runner Winfred Yavi succeeded in winning a gold medal in the women's 300 meter steeplechase race with a time of 9 minutes and 18 seconds, a set of a new record in the Asian Games. The Bahrain team, consisting of Abbas Youssef, Abbas Ali, Salwa Eid, and Olikimi Adikoya won gold in the 4 x 400 meters mixed race with a time of 3 minutes and 14 seconds ahead of the Indian and Kazakhstan teams. Meanwhile, runner Eddie Young of Anime won the bronze medal in the women's 200 meter race after finishing the race in third place with 23.48 seconds. With these results, Bahrain raised its tally in the championship to 11 colored medals, including 6 gold, 1 silver, and 4 bronze medals. 
the national sports sector is witnessing qualitative programs that uh, keep pace with the global development in the sports field for the benefit of all segments of society. Thanks to the advancement of the youth and sports system in the kingdom, the achievements made and the advanced position acquired in international events. Bahrain attaches great importance to supporting and empowering the youth, developing their cognitive and professional abilities, and enhancing their positive participation in various aspects of life, which stems from the belief that they are the wealth of the nation and the pillar of the growth as a result of the unlimited support of His Majesty the King, who laid the basic building block for Bahraini sports and supported the champions making further achievements for the kingdom. Bahrain affirms its distinguishedness in continuing its national achievements and initiatives regionally and globally in developing the positive contributions of the youth to development, peace and security, social justice and humanitarian work, and preventing violence and disasters, as well as reducing the risk in a manner that supports the UN Youth Strategy. The Institute of Public Administration became the first government institute in the GCC to obtain the International Coaching Federation ICF accreditation. The institute obtained its accreditation for its coaching program level one. Director General of the Institute for Public Administration, Dr. Sheikh Rana bint Isa bin Adij Al Khalifa said that the program was an integrated training program aimed at developing the coaching skills of managers and department heads in the public and private sector and enabling them to guide their employees towards institutional goals. She added that the program also helps develop institutional performances and contributes to increasing efficiency in the public and private sectors. Dr. Sheikh Rana said the institute's strategy is based on making all its services and programs aligned with the national visions and strategies and with international standards. The Ministry of Finance and National Economy published on its website the quarterly economic report for the Kingdom of Bahrain for the second quarter of the year 2023. According to the preliminary data issued by the Information and E-Government Authority, the gross domestic product at fixed prices in Bahrain during the second quarter of 2023 recorded an increase of 2% compared to the same period of the previous year. The ministry stated in its report that supporting this increase is the growth of the oil sector by 2.2% in addition to the growth of the non-oil sector by 2%. The Secretariat of the Supreme Council for Women in cooperation with a number of specialized authorities is organizing an awareness campaign on the importance of early detection of breast cancer. The campaign aims to raise women's awareness to enjoy a healthy life and psychological well-being at all stages of their life through several awareness activities that encourages early detection and the introduction of available medical examinations and the presence of specialized medical personnel to provide advice and guidance to prevent uh, breast cancer and to raise awareness on the importance of performing periodic medical and self-examination in addition to introducing the latest therapeutic techniques. Bahrain marks the Breast Cancer Awareness Month with programs and campaigns in government and private sectors. Bahrain attaches great importance to Breast Cancer Awareness Month by harnessing supportive awareness and educational programs and plans to increase possible means of prevention and strengthen areas of community partnership to reduce the spread of this disease and its repercussions. Preventive plans, therapeutic techniques and specialized medical personnel are present around the clock to follow up on the latest results research and studies as they are part of the national plan for the advancement of Bahraini women.